in what I'm doing. Just no, like in general. Just like in general, yeah. I've always had my shit together, but there was no YouTube. There was nobody like me that I could talk to. There was nobody that's like, bro, I'm, uh, I'm a big for nothing on a baseball field. I'm not successful. I got swag. I got chicks after me, whatever. But I'm not producing there. What does that mean to me? <laughs> What's up, everybody? It's your coach. Beautiful Miami out here. Beautiful Miami. Look at the cruises. Please, if you haven't yet, take your time. Subscribe. Subscribe to the channel. Show me some love. Comment below. I got you. Any questions you need, I got you. This video, it's end of the season now. I shot this video beginning of the season before the first game. My interview with FIU, the FIU Golden Panthers. I don't think they're Golden one. Just the Panthers, FIU Panthers. One of the best programs. I played there for a minute. We talked about so many things that are relevant now. So enough talking. Let's get into the video of my whole talk. The FIU baseball team. Big, 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 big side note. If you're not into cursing or the F word, you're not going to like this interview. So don't watch it because I got excited. I don't know what hit me. But it's a lot of F words and a lot of passionate stuff. If you're a fan of passion, you're gonna love this interview. If you're not a fan of passion or words that come from passion, you might wanna skip this video. Or the delay. My interview, talking to the FIU baseball team. Let's go. Actor will be Coach HP, better known as Coach HP, is here. So give it up. Usually when I talk, I talk to Coach. It's usually indoors, and there's not a guy cutting grass. But since I'm about to spit straight fucking fire, I don't matter, I'll stand in the sun and I'll tell you guys what I gotta tell you. Which is, I've waited 22 years to give this talk to you guys. The last place I played at, coincidentally, happens to be this place. The first place I spoke at, oddly enough, was in 2018, the national champs, Oregon State. And they reached out to a Cuban from Miami that went to a public school out here that happened to be the biggest failure in the history of Miami baseball, which that's me. And they reached out to me to speak. And when I spoke at Oregon State, I had no idea who'd be in the stands because I had no, no clue about Oregon State other than they had won the national championship. And sitting there was this dude, kind of like by where you're at, that wouldn't take his eyes off me the whole time. And I got into my whole story of who I am, the whole thing, blah, blah, blah. And at the end, I go, do you have any questions? And this dude raised his hand right away and said, coach, how do you do with failure? How do you deal with adversity? How do you stay so positive all the time? I answered that question, and he asked the second one. Then when I was done, we take a fucking picture, and the dude's right next to me. No idea who the guy was. When I was done, the manager calls me up and says, bro, you absolutely crushed it. By the way, you know who that dude was that was next to you? I go, no, I have no idea. The guy DM me right after, coach, you being here was God sent. Best thing that's ever happened to his program. Guy's name was Adley Rushman, the projected number one overall pick of the 2019 draft. Adley signed for a record $8.1 million with the Orioles at that time. So I suggest, unless anybody here is predicted to go number one overall, ask questions at the end. Is that cool? It's cool with everybody? All right. A couple things I want to get into, okay? First of all, I have so much empathy for every guy here. Empathy for us players means, man, I got your guys back so much, and I want you guys to win so much. Everybody here, I want you to win, not on the field. I want you to win at life, man. That's what I care about. What I care about is that you guys come back here 20 years from now, and you talk to this dude or whoever's here, and be as cool as can be as you are right now. Why? Because baseball players, this is the hardest sport anybody plays. I'm gonna talk over that motherfucker because I'm here to win. Does that make sense? Sure. This is the hardest sport to play. Why? Because there's no re-entry. So the minute we're out of the game, we can't do what? We can't come back in. So that means we have to be extra what? Team fucking players. How hard is it that everybody wants you guys to have each other's back on a sport that's so fucking jealous that if you don't play anymore, you're done? So we gotta talk about what these four years mean to you guys and how important these four years are. There's a clock that starts flipping over 
that starts to say how long you have left here. And time flies like this. And we all wish we're third batter, fourth batter, fifth batter, but there's only two of those positions. So that means we gotta play other positions. Where do we beat people? How do we stay in this for a whole season? It's up here. Mindset, mindset, mindset. How do you develop a positive mindset? Well, there's only two fucking things we can control in this world. Our effort and our attitude. Some of you guys here have sweet hair. I notice it. I lost my hair. I couldn't control that. But what I could control is what? My effort and my attitude. Do you think, honestly, anybody here is going to come to the plate and wants to strike out two times tomorrow, whenever it is, three times? You think we want to do an error on purpose? No, man. That just happens because this is the hardest thing to do. So the only thing we can control is what? The process of what the fuck's going to happen out there. The process. That's why these coaches want you to do what? Man, have the right energy. Have the right vibe. Whether you strike out, whether we're up five, down five, continue to have the right what? Vibe the whole time. Of course, everybody's fucking happy today because we're O and O and everybody thinks we're going to Omaha right now, so life is great. About two weeks from now, when half of you guys ain't playing, he's gonna be able to find out who's part of the team and who just cares about themselves. What I would do is completely the opposite. Guys, life is a relationship play. Relationships, we are here because of relationships. It's not about home runs. 16 people drafted in the last four years. The numbers don't look good for everybody here. But you know what we can fucking be? Cool dudes. I don't care if you're the star of this team, I don't care if you're the guy on the schedule, or if you're the guy nobody talks about. We can all be cool dudes and have each other's back. The only reason why I'm talking here is because the guy whose name's there in the locker room was right next to me, and that dude used to talk so much shit about me the whole time while we played baseball. I know because I heard it from him himself. And when I became Coach HP, the first guy to show me love was that guy. Like, bro, you're really crushing in what you're doing, man. I want you to come talk to FIU. Because I was fucking pissed that FIU didn't reach out to me, but Oregon State did. But I'm a giving guy. And I have so much respect for this guy because the fact that I'm here means he cares about who? You motherfuckers. This guy cares so much about you guys that he brings me out here. So how do you repay him back? Gratitude, man. This corona thing's crazy. We're playing today, we're not playing today, we're wearing the white jerseys, the blue jerseys, we're in that dugout, this dugout, fuck all that shit. What can we control? Effort and attitude. Coach, where are we warming up today? We're warming up back there in the fucking palm trees over there. Everybody's gonna run over there, warm up, and get the fuck back over here. Just don't complain. The mask, the bullshit, the low socks, high socks, the white shoes. I didn't get, fuck all that. We are the most underestimated program in the country. Nobody wants to play FIU because they know FIU does fucking damage. But are we ranked? Coach, are we ranked this year? Underestimated. What's our job? Effort and attitude. Relationships. Relationships. I'm the biggest failure in the history of Miami baseball. Been playing baseball since I was three years old. Walked on to Miami Dade, made that team. When it was three teams turned into one, but my fucking ego was so big that I wanted to hit like Bryce Harper when I should have hit like Christian Yelich when he was with the Marlins. I'm a big dude, I wanted to pop off, I wanted to, I used to play pepper, lefty off that fucking scoreboard over there, but I'm a contact guy. The hardest thing to teach all of us dudes that have a little bit of swag is a great world called how to be humble and be yourself. The more you let your play Speak louder than your swag, I promise you, you will win. See, it's reversed. The pro guy's a little different. So I work with a ton of pro guys and I work with their kids a lot. That's different, man. When you make $150 million, $300 million, whatever they're making, you could pop off, do whatever you want. But here, you guys can't even probably get a haircut without having to ask for permission if you get a fucking haircut. It's different, man. You gotta understand, you guys are soldiers here for four years. And because only 18 of us made it to the big leagues or got drafted, that means not good for a lot of us here. So what do we build? Relationship with who? With this guy, with your coaches. Have their back, man. If you're doing front toss and they blow the switch to group, don't leave the fucking balls there and everybody come here. Nah, you got it, you got it. Fuck that shit, man. Let's work together now. So when it's May and we're all at fucking Vanderbilt happy because now we're at Vanderbilt and everybody's gonna be excited for that game, 
We've already set the trend of who's a team player and who cares about each other here. And if you right now were like, fuck, man, I was that guy that was just thinking about himself, there's plenty of time. There's plenty of time for you to come to coach that coach. You know what, dude? I'm sorry, bro. I fucked up. I was just thinking about myself, but I'm going to change right now. The season started, and I'm going to give. I'm going to give so much that you're going to have to get rid of me of how much I'm giving. Before I leave here, coach, you need anything. Coach, anybody here need anything? But that's not sexy. You know what's sexy? To just fucking pimp everything. Ah, that guy will pick it up. The freshman will pick it up. That guy will pick it up. That guy will pick it up. What happens when the freshman's on the mound and we need him to get three outs, but we didn't have his back, and now everybody's like, oh, come on, come on, come on. Fake love. That's called fake. Want to keep it real? Start with yourself, man. You can't care about anybody else till you start caring about yourself. And be honest with yourself. Man, I've been full of shit this whole fucking offseason. Coach, I want to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. I almost get emotional thinking about this. I fucked up, man. I let you down. I only got two years here left, and I fucked up. I'm going to fix it. I'm going to start today. Think about that. Think about that fire, man. Think about that passion in what you do. It's not about home runs. That's your swing coach that wants to impress you with the fucking machine and the numbers. That's bullshit. It's about relationship, about you guys trusting each other and having each other's back. For you guys that are not on social media, I'm the most popular probably influencer in the country at what I do. Every place that I've gotten to is because I gave and the man upstairs or the universe or whoever you believe in has put everything in my track for me to be successful and be the happiest guy in the world to speak at FIU on a Thursday at like 12.30 or whatever time it is for free. Think about that life. That then comes Rawlings and pays me just to talk about baseball products and post that. How about that? I made twice as much, three times as much than my dad made working for Pepsi his whole life. I answered to nobody because I gave to everybody. See how that works? We now are family. I'm gonna give everybody my social. You're gonna reach out to me. Coach, I was a part of FIU today. I got you in whatever you need, I got you. Oddly enough, here's a good story that I told coach. Bro, I start my social media, da, 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 how to walk onto a program. A kid that was walking on here, maybe you guys knew him. I had no idea who he was. Asked me, coach, how do you walk onto a program? So I grab my camera and I do a video. Man, how you walk onto a program is this, 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 and that. So two years ago, when I was at the Rawlings Gold Glove Awards, and I'm interviewing Nolan Arenado, I had no idea it was his fucking cousin that I had helped out. See how this thing works? Miami, some of you guys are not from Miami. Miami is usually the reverse. Coaches like this don't exist in Miami. They all care about themselves. People care about themselves. And the minute you can't pay me, get the fuck out of my face. You want to win? You want to win here? Give. Give some more. Give a compliment. Help out. Don't criticize. That's for the fans. You guys have to have each other's back, every single one of you. And if there's a dude in here you haven't spoken to because you're the third baseman and he's a fucking pitcher, go talk to that guy today. And be like, bro, I haven't even said what's up to you, bro. What's up, man? Don't worry so much about the fucking song before you hit or what you Don't worry about that. Worry about effort and attitude. Passion. And if what I'm telling you doesn't sound exciting, bro, it's okay, man. We don't need more baseball players. Trust me, the world, the United States, Florida, doesn't need more baseball players. We need good dudes that come out into the world and live your dreams, man. Because baseball ain't about the nine guys that are out there. That's only for a select few. But imagine you can make a living now being an influencer of sports, commentating about sports, making funny videos about sports, having a podcast about sports. See how funny that is? I'm going to have a dude on my podcast today, Julian Marquez, who just won an MMA fight two days ago, calls out Miley Cyrus. So I'm going to have both of them on my show today. <laughs> right? But the guy was himself. Hardest thing for you guys is, dude, they don't have empathy for us because you guys look like men and you're fucking babies, bro. The front part of our brain as men, let me tell you guys something, doesn't develop till we're 24, 25. You guys are babies. We got testosterone. We don't know how to be vulnerable. We don't know how to talk to adults. We don't know how to talk to coaches in a cool way and say, coach, I'm not getting it, bro. Coach, 
I'm fucking struggling in the school like you got no idea. Coach, I'm heartbroken. This chick just broke my heart, bro. Stuff like that, it counts, man. Because what happens is when you guys come into the real world, which is my world now, you guys don't know how to deal with adversity. Because adversity is a winning player's best friend. Before this year, I had three of the biggest meetings in the world set up for me and my career. Corona hit, changed everything. I go, let's see if I'm going to sink or swim. And I started probably one of the number one positive podcasts in the world right now. Me. You guys are stronger than me, bigger than me, smarter than me. You speak English better than me, Spanish better. You guys are all winners. But where I get you guys is passion. Whether I look fucking stupid or not, I could give a fuck. Passion, man. And I got this guy's back. So how do you care about each other? Look at yourself. Man, I got to give. That's number one. How much have I given lately? Number one. Okay? Omaha is amazing. I've been there. It's beautiful. But I'd rather get to Omaha with my boys and sit there and watch a fucking game than everybody here fighting with each other and bullshit and get there. Because the season is long. Do you understand it's long, but it's not long, but it's long? And we only understand that because we're the only motherfuckers that get here at 3.30, 4.30 in the, in the afternoon. BP, that guy throws, this guy throws, uniform, this, that. 7 o'clock game, I don't play. Coach doesn't even look at me. I don't get in that bat. My parents at home think I should be the starter. My chick is telling me, babe, why aren't you on the field? You want to be a loser? Agree with your parents. Agree with your chick. Want to be a winner? Communicate with your coach. Coach, it's been a week, dude. Bro, why haven't I played, man? In a fucking cool way. I'm going to repeat it. Coach, it's been a week, bro. Like that, bro. I haven't played, man. What's up? He's going to tell you your role because that's a cool guy. If this was a hater like I had, I wouldn't even be here. We wouldn't have this talk because it'd be bullshit. This guy's going to listen to you. This guy has all the experience in the world. Plus, he has a son that's one of the best players, prospects in the country. So this guy has a lot of what? Information. But we take him for granted. Why? Because we see him every single day. So when I was in Vegas, to talk a little sexy here, I was the number one nightclub guy in Vegas. There's a club called Hyde and the Bellagio, and I ran that place, vice president of customer development. Everybody in the world came to that place. The Bellagio is the most visited hotel in the world. People spend thousands of dollars to go to the Bellagio. I'm living at the Mandarin Oriental in the Aria to show you the life that I have. Everybody's coming to me. There's these fountains in the back that people pay money just to sit there and look at the fountains. Sinatra, Elvis Presley, Celine Dion sing all these beautiful songs. After about three months, that fountains to me look like sprinklers that you have in your backyards. Because our mindset changes, bro. You know how many of you people fought to play for FIU? Think about playing for FIU, man. That's crazy, but you're already here, and because we got used to it, now it becomes, am I playing? Am I, is the coach talking to me? The coach didn't even talk to me, he don't care. So number one, communicate with this guy. After two weeks, you're gonna know who's playing and who isn't, and if you thought you were gonna be playing or you haven't got your ABs, talk to him. Don't talk to your boy on the team who's another hater because he's gonna hate on you, and they're gonna rat you out. Don't make that mistake. Same thing for my pitchers. Stay united, stay fucking united. The minute one guy goes a little crazy, Bring him back in and talk to coach. He's going to love that because he's going to think you what? You fucking care and you respect him because men respect what? Men. Does that make sense? Are we doing good here? Everybody pumped? I put my cheat sheet here just in case I get all fired up, man. Listen, I, I'm so happy for you guys. I'm, I'm ecstatic with the staff you have. I don't know if you guys are any good. I don't know what you did last year, to be honest with you. But what I care about is that when after the season, this guy goes to me, you know what, dude? These guys did the best they could. They're fired up. They stay fired up. When we were on some bullshit road trip, that the bags were checking in, they were a team, they didn't leave it for the poor freshmen. That kind of shit is what I care about because that's what we can control, man. Because you don't know who's sitting in this dugout. You don't know if the next... An example, Mike Studd is singing in this dugout, and you got the next hip-hop rap star is sitting in here right now. And if you were cool with that motherfucker, you're gonna have, he's going to have your back. But if you were hating on the guy because he played and you didn't, or he got chicks and you didn't, then you're not going to have that relationship anymore. 
Another thing which I told Coach I was gonna do, I always do this every time I speak, especially to good dudes like you guys. Be very careful with this thing. It's super hot to grab your chick, whatever party you got going on, and film it and show it off to you guys. You never know what hater is going to pop up and show that video to him, worse to the school, and you're going to lose your scholarship, you lose your position over something stupid like that. We all love to hook up with chicks, and especially the hottest girls in the world, and to share it with your boys. It's the best thing in the world. In this day and age, this shit gets you in trouble. A, you don't know whose daughter that is, you don't know whose neighbor that is, sister, whatever. So please, it fucking sucks for you guys, but there's other benefits that technology has. Very careful what you do with parties and the phone. Number two, this is the real world, this is the fake world. Again, this is the real world, this is the fake world. I love this world, I live in this world, but I'm the realest motherfucker in this world. I'm not gonna sit here and go, hey, what's up guys, so I'm here to fight you, everybody here fucking loves me, I'm the greatest speaker ever, I'll see you tomorrow. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna say, fuck man, I did the speech, the fucking maintenance people were driving me crazy, I was here, I showed these guys, I gave them all my passion and my heart, I'm debating to be the greatest fucking speaker they've ever seen, ever. And I didn't play big league baseball, and I didn't play minor league baseball, and I didn't have a college scholarship, but there isn't one more, there isn't a more qualified guy to speak to you guys because I dealt with more big leaguers and successful people and multi-millionaires and celebrities than anybody here combined 25,000 times over in what I do because I give. So I know who's winning in the winning happiness department. Got it? And if you're yawning while I talk, it's because the fire hasn't hit yet, but it will because I'm fighting for my life out here. Because I got one shot at this team. I don't have a fucking season. I got one shot. Is that cool? Let's get some questions, dude. I'm all fired up here. Let's get some questions. My oh, man. What was your dream growing up? My dream was, that's a great question. To be this guy. To be who I am now. The problem is, one of the reasons why I'm the biggest failure in the history of Miami baseball is, my dad prepared me for everything in life except to deal with him. So when I failed, my dad would beat the shit out of me, punch style, 80 style, in front of everybody. So bad that I had so much trauma dealing with that that I peed in the bed till I was like 14, 15 years old. I didn't know how to deal with that. So I developed something called identity issues. And I wanted to be the cool guy. So who was the cool guy when we played? Jose Canseco. Now it's like Bryce Harper, Francisco Lindor, Conor McGregor, all these cool guys. I got no swag like that. The minute I realized that I'm myself, a Cuban dude that wished he went to private school but didn't, the minute I realized that I'm a public school guy and that what works for me is being blue collar and helping everybody out is when I started to win in life. So my dream was to be this guy right now and to speak to a fucking group of pumped, NCAA college, division one students, and you guys listen to me and one of you motherfuckers go, damn, he changed my mind. That's my dream. What's the best advice someone's told you? Best thing anybody's ever told me is, you gotta be yourself. That's why it all ties into the dream. Super hard for you guys. That's why I led with gratitude and empathy. Gratitude and empathy. Man, I'm lucky that I have that going on. Because I think like a baseball player, I'm not thinking like a speaker right now. Imagine all of us here dragging the fucking field doing that. That shit sucks, we don't want to do that. So that's why that goes on. Because I'd rather him do it than us. But if we gotta do it, we're gonna crush the field doing that. So the best advice I ever got is, be yourself. And if you want to hit like Bryce Harper, that's one of one. You want to be now like Fernando Tatis Jr. because that's the swag and he raced it, that's one of one. That's one motherfucker that got, that got $320 million to do what he did. Nobody else is gonna get that. So be yourself. And if you don't like yourself, it's super cool, man. I don't like myself either. I didn't have a TV growing up. I had the worst clothes ever. If I would have owned up to that, and when I was in Los Angeles, I had identity issues, and when I'm at Leonardo DiCaprio's house, and supermodels everywhere, 
I would have told people, you know what? I'm a Cuban dude from Miami, blue collar, that slept in a car for six months in the Hollywood Hills to make it as an actor. That would have gotten me everybody impressed. But you know what I did? I lied. I go, no, no, I played with the Yankees. I injured my elbow. Google wasn't too popular yet. And you know what happened? The right dude, because there's always that one dude, popped me, started hating on me, and cock blocked me in front of everybody. Now I look like the idiot, right? So you gotta be yourself, man. And if you have a great car, awesome. If your car fucking sucks, awesome. When you come into my world, you worry about that. Right now, what do you worry about? This. Don't worry about girls right now. This. Why? Because when I played in high, when I was in college, Miami won two titles, 99, 2001. They were the team, TV, national titles, whatever. Everybody I know that's in their 40s, that's in that team, are miserable dudes. You wanna know why? Because if the highlight of your life is FIU baseball, when you're 40 years old, you're gonna be a loser. Because this is about now. Nobody cares when you're 40 that you hit the opposite field or you hit two home runs against fucking Northern Illinois. They don't give a fuck about that. What they care about is, you know what, man, one day I had a bad game, I went over for three, and the only one guy that called me was this dude right here. And he goes, bro, let's go have something to eat, man, because I see you're struggling. Because when you come to my world, you know who's going to do that? Zero. Because everybody's out for who? The top guy. Everybody's out for the motherfucker that comes on a Thursday at this time for free and is speaking about his passion. So nobody's jocking me. Everybody's hating on me. So I come with love. So the best thing I tell you is be yourself. Next question. What would you have done different if you were sitting where they're sitting right now? What would you have done different now than you guys are lucky. My coach, hater. Fucking hater. Cool coach. Willie played from two. Hater. Cool coach, right? I talked to my coach someone. Coach, before the season, in case anybody's confused, coach, where do you see me? What's my role? Well, I see you off the bench. My first pinch hitter off the bench. I see you my third pinch hitter off the bench. Perfect. I'm gonna grab my bat and my batting gloves, and about the seventh, sixth inning, I'm gonna start rooting everybody on and be like, all right, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. In my head, oh boy, I wanna play. Boy, I wanna play. Life sucks, I wanna play. Oh man, I'm never, I'm not gonna play today. Hey, let's go, let's go. That's how you do it. But if you get in your head and you're like, oh, I'm not gonna play. Oh my God, I'm not gonna play. Then you stay back there and these guys see it. And you know what happens in baseball? Just like it happens in life. People get injured, people get into slumps, people get depressed, people do illegal shit and get, get kicked off the team. So when life is ready to call on you, you're the next Tom Brady. Now I got everybody's fucking attention because now you're the GOAT. Do you understand when Tom Brady was in Michigan, he was about to leave because he wasn't even playing? He was done. Who did he call? His dad. And what does dad say? Stay in there, man. Let's stay in there, let's figure it out. So you know what Tom did? He spoke to the top psychologist in the country that he got. And you know what that psychologist told him? Shit that I'm telling you right the fuck now. Which is, what can you control? Effort and attitude. So you know what Tom Brady did? Every time he took a fucking snap in a scrimmage in practice, he took it like if he's in the Super Bowl. People thought he was crazy. Think about that. So for some of us, the only thing we're getting is BP. You wanna be a loser? Play home run derby and BP. Let the coach know you only give a fuck about yourself. Wanna be a winner? When it's that bullshit opposite field round, stick right there and go opposite field. Cause when a scout sees anybody hit at the top part of the fucking turtle, you're not getting drafted, bro. See how this all plays together? See how this works? Cause you think a scout's gonna sign you without speaking to this guy? Are you crazy? So I want this guy to be the number one cheerleader of me in the fucking world. Because for those of us that are not getting drafted, you might want to work. And you might want something that he has. Let him drill, let him do whatever the fuck they want out there. Passion. You hear me? Passion. 
That's what I would do. I would talk to this guy and figure out my role and be yourself, man. If you throw strikes at 85, don't try to throw 92. Throw strikes at 85. Your chick doesn't think that's sexy. Everybody here, pump each other up. Bro, you threw 85, bro. What's up, bro? Yeah, yeah. Everybody high five each other that they think FIU is fucking crazy. No, we're fucking savages, bro. And we measure sexiness in a different way. Oh, you bunted and you sacrificed the guy? Every motherfucker in here is going crazy. Oh my God, we just uh, sacrificed. We lost our mind. Wanna know why? Because I want when people look at the schedule and they see FIU to not go, oh my God, we're going to Miami? That's going to be awesome. I can't wait to go to Miami. And I want one senior in that team to look at that fucking freshman and go, the fuck you do? The fuck you do want to go to Miami? Those guys are fucking savages down there. They'll eat you alive. Not home runs. They'll bunch you to fucking death. And you know when they celebrate? When they're fucking shaking hands at the end of the field. And they don't care about the Friday game. They want to win the Friday game. Then we're going to do the Saturday game. And then we're going to do the Sunday game. Step by fucking step. And if we lose all three games, we're gonna worry about that Wednesday game and we're gonna bring the Wednesday game. That's FIU baseball. That's what these guys talk about. If anybody thinks to one of your fucking meetings, tell me I'm wrong. Tell me it almost sounds like everything this dude has been telling you since we all gathered here. Why? Because he's a winner. I can tell, he's a winner. Your coaching staff are all winners. Nobody hated on me when I got here. Those are winners. Talk to them, man. Don't make them your enemy because they don't play you or you're not the starting guy or you thought you were the number two, but now you're the number one off the bullpen. Who cares? Who cares? You got four years. Can we control that? Can we control if in BP we don't hit the top of the L screen? Yes. Can we control when we warm up, we do it fucking right and we do the five bands the right way or 15, we don't just go, yeah, bullshit, 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 let's go, let's go, right? This is a patience game. It's slow. This is slow. It ain't fast. Fuck that guy. <laughs> nah, I love that guy. By Any other question? Come on. I need at least three more. The coaching staff can have more than you guys. Come on. My man. That's a good one. Growing up, it was everybody wrong because I was overcompensating. So I would have loved to show up here in a fucking Lamborghini and you guys be like, wow, this is Coach HP and this guy's a fucking man. So my role model, it's gonna sound stupid as hell, but are you guys, man. I feel so empathetic for you guys and I hope that you guys get what I'm saying right. Cause nobody's talking to you guys about this. Everybody sees you guys, good looking dude, strong, athletic, and they don't feel sorry for you. Everybody expects you guys to be Superman. And we're not, man, we're humble guys. And the problem is, people started treating baseball players not like racehorses, because those get put out to stud and they're worth a lot of money, like greyhounds. They use us for four years and they spit us out to the real world. Good luck. So my role model are you guys, man. Can you guys stick to what I'm talking about? Effort and attitude all the way through, all the way through. Not bullshit, swag, and stuff. that doesn't win game. That doesn't get anybody's respect. Everybody that's a man, that's winning in life, effort and attitude, dude. And then realize your talents. We all have different talents. So don't be so hard on yourself as long as you work hard. Next one. Say it again, bro. When you're struggling? Oh good, that's a great question. So we're gonna struggle a lot, especially the hitters, okay? When you struggle, number one thing we gotta do is whatever the hitting plan is, you gotta keep it simple. And then the only thing you can control is the process of the event, not the result. So you gotta practice perfectly. But in the game, if I go 0 for 2 and I'm struggling or not playing, how I get out of my head is I cheer for the other guy. I salute the other guy. I give love to the other guy that gets me out of my head. So when I struggle, the first thing to do is I get out of my head and I don't worry about I'm struggling. Yes, you're gonna get benched, that sucks, but then can you get out of it? That's the challenge. Because in the game, everything has to be to the positive. 
because we don't get another shot. Practice everything to the negative. What does that mean? My hit away round, everything I'm doing perfectly, hit away. In the game, I pull a pitch, I try my best. Nobody here wants to mess up on purpose. Does that make sense? Empathy for yourself. This is hard, man. Game one's gonna come, everybody's gonna be here fired up, what's gonna happen? Half of my hitters are gonna be pulling the ball because you're pumped. Half of my pitch is gonna be overthrowing because we're pumped. Relax, breathe, and stick to the basics. Throw strikes, see the ball, hit the ball. And then we'll worry about other things. Two more questions. My oh, man. Mm. That's a good question too, bro. Because nobody put more of their life to baseball than me. I didn't go to prom. I didn't go to homecoming. I didn't have a TV in my room. I got the shit beat out of me. I didn't have a car in high school. I didn't have a car here. So I got my ass kicked from age three to like about 20 something. And I got nothing to show for it baseball wise. My last game was here and my dad pulled over here outside and because I wasn't playing for whatever time as a fifth year senior, walk that I walked onto a team that had just gone to super regionals before so the team was stacked. My dad goes, either today you go fuck a price or I'm gonna jump the thing and fuck them up. I said, I'm done. I walked there, I left my from there, nobody ever saw me here again, no Hector, no nothing, that's it. See what I'm saying? Effort, attitude, do the weights the right way. It sucks, you gotta walk from here to over there, that fucking sucks. Think about how f further people are walking. Think about people that don't even have that. Perfect, now you got it here, you see? Look how that is, right? Look at that over there. All these things, man. Now you got Adidas, cool shit. When I played here, it was these fucking orthopedic Nike shoes all black that were disgusting, right? They look horrible. See what I'm saying? But who cares about that? I care less about those shoes. What I care about, the people, man. You can't replace people. Not gonna happen. Last two questions. Being the greatest motherfucker that ever did it. What I'm doing right now, to do more of it. Dude, I get paid to travel and talk to people. More than, again, I use my dad. My dad used to have to wake up every morning, go to Sedano's, go to Publix for Pepsi at five in the morning. Blue collar guy, wear a Pepsi uniform, who had good intentions, but he was never humble enough to help others. So where I see myself is being the guy that's helped the most. Being the greatest guy that's helped the most. Whether you're famous or nobody knows who you are. In fact, I'd rather deal with underdogs than with the guys that everybody's jockeying because you're the guys I care about. Because those guys, they have to deal with different problems. Ironically, the sport that abused me my whole life has taken care of me my whole life. I live off baseball. How crazy is that? Last question while they redo the whole fucking field. <laughs> Are we redoing the field today? Like, what is this? Are we putting a dome? What's going on? There's never been more action than this field in life. <laughs> This is I know this is perfect. Uh, let's fucking let's bring every let's put a dome. Are we doming this place? Hey, but listen, you gotta get through it. I'm gonna hit you right now. You gotta get through it. You know what I'm saying? You gotta get through it. When I speak here, I see half of you guys' eyes. I know who's getting tired. I know whatever. That sucks. But I care about you guys so much that I just don't check out. I wanna be the greatest speaker that has ever come here. My man. What it stays motivated? Because the job's never done, man. When I started doing, here's sexy for you guys. I came back from being the main guy in Las Vegas to Miami, and I started the idea of vlogging. So I would walk around with that camera around fields like Flagami, Palmer Park, Grapeland, and vlog myself, and I got hated on by everybody. And who the fuck got these vlogging in Miami? except the kids. The kids were like, oh my God, vlogger, YouTube. So my passion was that if I could share my story of me thinking I was wrong, thinking I was better than everybody, thinking I was a big shot, 
thinking I was the coolest guy, that I could get the hottest chicks, that I could get more than anybody, and humbling myself to understand that I'm just one of you guys. That's my passion, that's what motivates me every single day. When I come and watch you guys, I'm gonna see who cares about the team and who cares about himself, it's gonna be obvious. When the umpire calls a strike that you think's a ball, and you're gonna go, ah, and walk back, that motherfucker's just caring about himself. When the umpire does that to you and you go, fuck, man, and you run back here, put your fucking helmet in there, and you go, all right, dude, let's go, bro, here we go, here we go. Well, that motherfucker killed me. Yeah, bro, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. See how you gotta do it? But we do the reverse. Ah, oh, he fucking killed me, ah, oh, bro, why? Whose respect are we gonna earn? Nobody's here. Nobody cares about that, right? The reason why giving is winning, because people only care about who? If we take a picture right now, who's the first person you're gonna look for? Bro, let me see how I came out. Let me see how I came out, right? Nobody goes, oh shit, let me see how Coach looks in this picture. <laughs> look, it's stupid. We just laughed, like, what the, are you crazy? But let me see how I came out, bro. Do I look good? Right? You wanna win? You wanna win in this dugout? You wanna win in this team? Yes, everybody wants to go to Omaha. I could care less about that place. I want to win in Miami, man. I want to win in this dugout. I want these coaches to respect me. And you know what's going to happen in life? They're going to pay it back to you. I'm going to pay it back to you. You understand there's bigger things that play here? God, the universe, things that you don't even know are happening, that are happening right now, man. This whole thing is different. Life isn't A's, B's. It's different, man. I could be talking to the next governor, the next mayor, all of a sudden Miami became the sexy spot to be in. Not because of the beaches, because the mayor, who's gonna be on my show the following week and I work with six of his relatives, is all of a sudden the coolest mayor in the country. He became the coolest mayor in the country because coronavirus hit and the rest of the governors fucked up California and New York. You know who's winning now? Florida, Miami, 305. Because we got the weather and our places are open and the rest of the country right now is doing what? They're freezing their asses off. I got people reaching out to me that are flying one day to talk to me. I had two dudes from Pittsburgh coaches fly to talk to me for 30 minutes. They got on a flight at nine in the morning yesterday to talk to me, probably that was half of it, the other half to be in the Miami Sun, whatever, and they flew back yesterday at 11 o'clock. Look at us, man. The rest of the country's under snow. They don't see this. That's why I'm happy that dude's out there. That's why I'm happy this is happening. How can I hate on this son? Last question, coach. I'm fired up, man. In baseball? In life? Why is your boy laughing? Why are you laughing at him, man? Why are you hating on him? Look, it's a good question. Especially, look, I'm a Latin dude, I got passion, I got testosterone, I got my cheese, I got a lot of stuff, right? Emotions are good, but I like to keep it even keel. So what does that mean? If I hit a bomb off you right now, and it goes over those lights, whatever, whatever, yes, it's super fucking sexy to drop the bat and go like this, and now you guys are gonna go, oh! and it's gonna go crazy, and somebody will shoot it, and it's gonna go viral and all stuff, right? But then the same emotion happens what? When I strike out. We don't want the same attention on us when we do what? strike out. When we leave two guys on base for the third time in the game, we don't want everybody to spotlight to go, oh, right? So what do you do with your emotions? Bro, I keep it down the middle, man. Inside, I'm super happy. Okay, I'm always preparing for what? For the worst. When you call the firefighters, they always bring the hose, even if there's not a fire. Because you can't go, oh my God, we forgot the fucking hose, <laughs> right? When you go to play, you always have your plan. But it's a game of failure. We're gonna fail seven times. Anybody hit 500 here last year? <laughs> that qualified? <laughs> you good? So that's five times this dude had to deal with it. Everybody else is six, seven, eight and a half, nine, right? So what can you control? Your emotions, how do you control it? By breathing and thinking what's happening. Okay, I'm coming to bat now. What's my situation, coach? First inning, am I looking to work the pitcher? We're gonna talk about that and I'm gonna have my plan. What's the plan? We don't know how to have a plan. What's FIU's hitting plan? We don't know it, better talk to that motherfucker right now after here. What's our hitting plan, coach? What's our pitching plan? 
What's the middle reliever plan? What's our plan when we get into the seventh inning and we're down by two? What's our plan when we're in the eighth inning and we're up by one? What's the plan? Because you can control the plan. The result of the plan, we can't control. So right now, that's what you guys got to be talking about. If I'm here and I'm a bench guy and I don't see my name at that lineup, can I maintain nine innings of happiness, positivity? And if I only did six, I try my best. I need to go more. And if I did two, or if I didn't feel out, feel like a piece of shit, I can't do that anymore. Because it's obvious to these guys. That's what they're looking at. That's all they're looking at. Because the season's going to go long, man. All right? One last one, coach. Last question. Come on. My man. Would you say that there was like an exact moment in your life where like the switch just hit and you're like, oh shit, like I got to get my shit together? Or? In what I'm doing? Just no. like in general. Just in like in general? Yeah. I've always had my shit together, but there was no YouTube. There was nobody like me that I could talk to. There was nobody that's like, bro, I'm, uh, I'm a big for nothing on a baseball field. I'm not successful. I got swag. I got chicks after me, whatever. But I'm not producing there. What does that mean to me? My dad's beating the shit out of me. I have zero freedom. What does that mean to me? There wasn't any of that. Now there is. Now there's a lot of information. You can reach out to a million people. So that's what I realized, man, that I didn't have. I didn't have that. When I was in Hollywood sleeping in a car, I couldn't YouTube and motivate myself. So I learned mindset. Everything is mindset. When we break here and you go where you got to go, you just forget about this and go, okay, cool. You're going to be fired up, I promise you. Half of you are going to be fired up because it's fire. Next week, what is it going to look like? Next Sunday, next off day, what is it going to look like? Are we going to do our homework? Are we going to fuck around so they complain to him? Are we going to do our hours in the gym? Right there in that gym? Are we going to half the fucking squad? Okay, well, how many reps? Hey, oh, I'm going to do six. I'm tired. That's a loser. Want to be a winner? Coach, we got to do eight. I'm doing 10. We got to do five. I'm doing 20. Whatever it is, whatever. But they can't be motivating everybody. You guys got to motivate yourself, man. Coach, how do we feel about tattoos? We like tattoos or no? For players? What? Tattoos. Do we like tattoos or no? On players? I know, I like it, I'm just saying. I love it. I love it. Guy. My boy, I should listen, let me give you some tattoo advice also. I didn't get my first tattoo till I was 30. Okay, I love them. Take your time. Right? Take your time. We think about it. Think about it, because they you can't take them off and take them off, it sucks. So just take your time. But if you have them, enjoy them. Be careful with chicks, you know? You gotta be careful with your mom. That one's a good one, but careful with chicks. You don't want to jinx it. Coach, any questions for me, man? Anything? No, what I do want to say is uh, the story he didn't tell you in, in general is that he reached out to me five years ago. Uh, of course, you're coming into a job, and that sort of thing you don't know. A lot of people are reaching out, and, and I didn't reach out and he reminded me. He goes, hey, by the way, five years ago, I reached out and you, you stumped me. You said, oh, hey, hey, whatever, whatever. Uh, I believe there's the right time for everything. Uh, this is the right team. This is the right place, like you said. It's the universe, God, whatever you believe in. But as, as now is the time. Now is the perfect time. Uh, when, I was, when I was talking to him, I, I felt the passion. And not only that, but I just think that it, it's just important to have someone that is, that is a good influence. It's going to be a good, good influence for us. Because I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, right now, Coach, that you're going to be here. You're going to be here to love us. And I think it's important to have him be part of us. It's just not an outsider coming in to talk to you, hey, do this, follow me, and all that stuff. No. This is going to become a ritual that we are going to do. It's important to have someone that's going to be another positive influence in your life, in what you do. Uh, and it's real. This is real. As real as it gets. And you'll get to know him a little bit more. So, uh, I want to say thank you. I'm not going to say I'm sorry that we didn't talk five years ago hey. because it was, it was meant to be for us not to. God knows why, but now is the right time. Uh, I love it, and, and I wanted to do this prior to us starting our practices, but starting the season with him here is probably better than starting the practices. So it's the right time. We start tomorrow. Uh, I feel really, really sorry for whoever we're playing against that I, I will say. Uh, there, but, yeah. Uh, Co guys, 
at Coach HP on Instagram. At Coach HP, shoot me a DM. Say, Coach, I was here. I felt it. I didn't, whatever. I got you, man. If you want it to stay between us, I have that talk with Coach. It stays between men. Whatever it is, we'll talk about it, and we'll fix it. I care about these next four years with you guys, and then after. Whatever you do in life, okay? I didn't take it personal when he snubbed me or he, didn't, he gave me some bullshit answer. He had a lot of stuff on his plate, man. I had empathy for him. He had just come here. It was a big job. A lot of people wanted this job. He came here, a new guy in town, and got it. Probably the first Latin coach to coach here, be at his level. It's a big deal. Moved his whole family down here. It's not about me. It's about you guys. I got no drip in my pocket. Must have forgot it, or maybe I already lost it. Don't got enough to go cop it. I'm about to take off like a rocky. Houston, we might have a problem, but that don't mean money on solve em. No, that don't mean money on solve em. Woke up dreaming other commas, and I got a hundred dollars in my wallet. I've been trying to make it, do it for my mama. I ain't with the fake and never with the drama. She said that I'm naked, now I gotta honor that. Replace a Honda with a fucking model. I replace my exes with a couple models. She act out of pocket, now it's just a problem. I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. No, really, don't worry. I don't want no Burberry glowing like the sun, or maybe a little Mercury. Shooting like I'm booker, but nobody ever heard of me. They don't got five O's when I say a word to me. Nah, but really, really, y'all been acting silly. I could care less if you fucking with me, cause I still got the chest coming.